This is a seven step checklist for SEO. It's gonna help you make sure that every post you published is perfectly optimized. Now, one of the first questions is, why is SEO important? And right here on the screen, you can see a screenshot from today from my wife's website in analytics. Now you'll notice at the bottom, this is not her overall site numbers. This is only what has come in through Google and this is a nine year snapshot. It literally goes back to nine years from today. And you can see that in total, she has had 14,969,843 visits to her site from approximately, we can call that 10 million people, right? 9,773,444 people. So why did these people show up to her website? It's because she took time to craft great content and also to optimize the content for search engine optimization. One other note, you can see this graph is very, very heavily weighted from about 2014 on. To be honest, in 2013 and 2014, we were getting a very noteworthy amount of traffic. She just has a couple spikes up over 60,000, which is why the, the graph looks the way it looks. Um, so it takes a few years to get this going, but when you get it working, whether we're traveling, uh, whatever we're doing, right? We could be working, we could be traveling, we could be not working, and we still get traffic each and every day, upwards of 60,000 visits per day. So let's jump into it. Number one, keyword research. And I gotta say, just before we get really into the nuts and bolts, there's gonna be a lot of resources for you to go deeper on the steps that you're not doing yet, and those resources will be below in the description. Keyword research is the first one. I have a great playlist on keyword research. The one video I think you should absolutely watch, if you haven't, will pop up above my head in the video itself. You can click on that to watch, but the questions you wanna ask yourself are, have you found a low difficulty keyword phrase that has high search volume? If not, you're probably not gonna rank quickly. So focus on the low difficulty, high search volume phrases. That's what that video I popped up above will show you. Is the keyword relevant to your audience? Some people are targeting keyword phrases that have great numbers, but it's not actually relevant to their audience. That's a big problem. Relevance is everything in the world of SEO. Google's always trying to help get better or trying to get better at helping its users find the most relevant answer to the question or search query they enter. So are you putting out great relevant content. And finally, does the keyword have good search intent? I did a whole video on search intent that will definitely be in the description. Um, there's different levels of intent behind search. There's people who are looking for just plain information. There's people who are looking to buy things, depending on who you are, what your business is, what that page or post is designed to do. It needs to match the right intent of the keyword phrase. So study the keyword intent video if you haven't already, but if you know what that is, let's move on to number two. So number two is is Google suggestions. Have you done a Google related search, right? Have you searched the keyword phrase on Google and found the related phrases that are at the bottom of the page? Have you looked at what is auto suggested on Google when you type in your main keyword phrase? Because those phrases that Google auto suggests for you and puts at the bottom of the search engine result page, those are the keyword phrases that Google think are highly, highly relevant. So is the content on page one when you search your keyword phrase relevant and is it in alignment with what you think it is? You might find a keyword phrase that has great numbers and then you go search it on Google and it turns out it was a movie title and it has no relevance to you and the whole first page of Google is Rotten Tomatoes and Netflix and all these movie based things and you didn't realize it was a movie uh, title was the name of the keyword and that's why it got all the search volume. Those are the things you're looking for. So you wanna make sure that all your energy is focused on those kinds of keyword phrases that have great, that that have the right relevance and they have the right types of posts displaying that prove you're in the right place with your idea, your niche, your audience, etc. Number three, the post length. So many people are like, Miles, how long does the post need to be? And I know it's a terrible answer to say it depends, but that's the truth. So here's how you find out exactly how many words your post needs to be to the T because every post is different every time. You go open up the top five posts that are currently ranking for that phrase, you copy it and you paste that into a word counter. How many words are on the top five? Then find the average. You want to be about 10% above average. Okay, so if every post has 1500 words and that's the average is 1500, you should come in somewhere around 15 to 1650 words. If every post on the top five has 3000 words and you publish a post that has 900 words, you're not gonna rank, right? Google expects the top posts for that phrase to have 3000 words because they're ranking posts with 3000 words. So go find what's actually working and then go be within that kind of 
factor within that score, uh, potentially a little bit over what they're doing. Then have you broken up your post with multiple H2 and H3 sections? These are heading sections. They make it really easy to read and they give you the ability to optimize on the subtopics in each one. Are you using short and punchy sentences? Very long blocks of text are extremely difficult to read, especially on mobile. So make sure you're using short punchy sentences. We live in a scrolling environment these days. So you want to make sure that people are able to read through your content really quickly because if they come across a, a block of text this big on their phone, they might hit the back button that might increase your bounce rate that might lower your time on site and it might get you lower rankings from that negative feedback that Google would be picking up. And then are you bolding and italicizing the keyword phrases and the other relevant phrases? What are the other relevant phrases? Well, it's any synonyms or the auto suggest options that you found in the previous slide and also the search recommendations that show up at the bottom of Google. Those are the other things you can bold and italicize in the text. Next one, have you optimized your H2s through H4s? Now, I only say optimizing those ones, you need one H1, right? So if, do you have an H1 tag, which is a top heading tag on your, does your theme automatically put it on? If not, you need to manually add it and it needs to have your main keyword in the H1. So you wanna pay attention to that. Then for all your H2s to H4s, the best way to optimize them is shown in my right SEO content fast video. I'll have it pop up above my head. It'll be in the description below and it teaches you exactly how to structure content based on what Google gives you feedback on from slide two and then how to use that in the H2s and H3s and H4s to structure your content. So it's really building the relevance for your main keyword phrase while getting all of those suggested keyword phrases inside of the H2, H3 and H4. Uh, so include Google's suggestions in these subheadings, the H2, H3, three H four. And then also the autocomplete. Are they in those headings as well? Numero cinco, we're on to optimizing the images. Have you compressed your images? So they load quickly. I personally do this in Photoshop to make sure I'm compressing them. So they load extremely fast. My goal is to have all of my images between 20 kilobytes and 50 kilobytes in size even really big images. I smash them down as much as I possibly can. If you don't use Photoshop, just Google for image compression. There's a few uh, tools that, that you can use. You can just upload it, it compresses it, and it gives you another version of that. And then upload compressed versions of your images so they load quickly. Do you have the keyword inside of the file name, inside of the title, and inside of the alt text when you bring that image up? Now, you don't wanna repeat the you don't want to repeat just the keyword phrase in every image. You would use your auto suggest phrases and you would use your relevant searches phrases for other images based on where they are. If an image is sitting within your H3, it's under that H3 tag. It needs to have the same keyword phrase that the H3 tag is about. So the image shows relevance to that same section of text. So Google really gets that hierarchy and structure of content from you. Then, do you have a Pinterest image in there? Uh, 700 by 1100 that's shrunk down? Great, you need to. Did you pin that over to Pinterest? Have you claimed a business account on Pinterest so you can get a backlink from Pinterest? Every time you're pinning your image, you should habituate that process. It gives you a little head start on getting the word out about your post through the search engine spiders that are crawling Pinterest already. Number six, the title, the description, and the URL itself. Is your main keyword or variation in the actual title of the post? I pretty much always put my main keyword in the title of the post. Is your main keyword or variation inside of the description? Oftentimes I have my main keyword in the title and the description. I use Yoast to manage the title and description on my blog, but really you can do a variation of your main keyword inside of the description, but I would definitely focus on getting your main keyword inside of the title itself. And if you can get that keyword up towards the front of the title, not at the very end of the title, that is better optimization. And then is your title and is your description compelling? And when I say compelling, remember that when users search a keyword phrase, when they see your result on Google on the results page, they're looking at your title tag and your description tag. So that tag needs to yes, include your keywords, but it really needs to compel that individual who's searching to click. So you're talking copywriting at this point, right? It needs to be good 
kind of exciting, intriguing, curiosity inducing content that's going to get a user to think, ooh, I want to see what that post is about. So it needs to be compelling content that is also search engine optimized. And then is your keyword in the URL slug? So is it um, like, for example, milesbeckler.com forward slash learn dash SEO. That's the URL slug learn dash SEO for my learn SEO post. And the main keyword is learn SEO. So you want to make sure you get the keyword in the URL slug as well. And then number seven is internal and social linking. So does this post that you just created link out through the text itself to the other relevant posts on the topic? If not, you need to make sure you're including relevant links over to your other posts to build bridges from your current content that Google search engine spiders will kind of come crawl first to the other relevant posts about that same topic. It's how you build relevance is through your own internal web of links. And then do you have the other relevant posts linking to this post? Now that's a really important one as well because that's how you can help the search engine spiders find this post as they crawl your other sites because those spiders come back to your site every day and they recrawl what they already found to see if there's any changes and when they find a new link that takes them over to this new post they're also going to crawl this post and when they find five or six different links coming back to it they're going to think ah this is an authoritative post because it's got so many internal links pointing to it i have a good friend who runs an seo agency he does a lot of testing on on-page stuff and he says two internal links are equivalent to one external link of the same story strength. So be sure you're linking to your own internal content. And finally, have you shared the post on social media? That's the last one. Um, I don't have a huge social media platform. Generally speaking, I will promote my content on Twitter, maybe Quora, maybe Reddit. Um, but just you want to habituate some sort of process of sharing it because you want to get some social shares. Oftentimes, I will go back into other YouTube videos that are relevant, and I will link a YouTube video back over to my new blog post by entering it in the description of a YouTube video as well. And that's really it. I wanted to make a quick and really kind of a fast, simple video that you can reference back to, to be sure you're optimizing your posts as best as you can, because if you stay focused on the process of optimizing each and every post as you're publishing each and every post, the likelihood of you generating millions of visits like my wife has been able to with her content marketing on her WordPress blog goes up significantly. If you're not taking the time to do the keyword research, to do your SEO, how do you expect the search engines to find you and to know what your content is about? And if you're not titling it, and if you're not using the phrases that those exact searchers on Google are searching for, there's no way that Google's going to connect those dots for you. Google needs you to take the time to optimize your content and to do the keyword research so you can show and tell and prove to Google exactly what your topic is for that post based on this type of optimization. That way, when a user is searching for the answer, Answer that you wrote in your post, Google is able to see, aha, you have the most relevant post for that. Google is going to put you in the number one spot and you will end up getting the lion's share of the traffic in that situation. I hope this has been helpful. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. If you didn't already, any questions, get at me in the comments below. I'm happy to answer your questions and I thank you very much for your time. Look forward to connecting with you on the next video. Till then, be well.